I just finished a build with the Siren FPV flight controller in it. You can't see the build because it is the camera I'm using to record this right now. And I'm going to do a video where I talk about the Siren. That's coming. But I'm actually here to talk to you today about the Betaflight OSD. Now, I showed you a brief look at the Betaflight OSD before. Well, sort of. I showed you the Betaflight configurator GUI. But I didn't actually show you what the OSD could do from the actual OSD's perspective. And I didn't show you all of the things that are new. I think they're new anyway in Betaflight 301. So since Betaflight now has the OSD as part of Betaflight, when Betaflight updates, the OSD may update too. And that's nice because uh, <laughs> Betaflight updates a lot. So it suggests that the OSD is also going to be updated a lot and that's good but so i looked at a siren when i was out in seattle with the microsoft drones garage guys uh just a few weeks ago and it didn't have a lot of the things that i'm seeing now in the siren that i have now and if i wanted to be really thorough i would flash this back to blade of flight 3.0 and see if indeed that's why i'm seeing all these new options but i'm not going to do that because i'm not that thorough so let's just take a look at the options that are in it now and I think you're going to be really impressed. So as you can see on the menu here, and I just rebooted the controller so you could see that, in order to get into the menu, you go mid-throttle, and I go mid-throttle just because I don't want to arm or anything, but mid-throttle, you all right, pitch forward, and now you're in the menu. And that's just like it is with MWOSD, but that's really where the similarities end. Uh, for one thing, look how responsive the menu is. Like, when you use MWOSD, you have to go one, two, Three. Oh, see, I accidentally went two clicks there. It's so freaking responsive. I love it. And this is because it's not communicating over a UART, a serial protocol. It's communicating with SPI. So if we look at the options that are in here, I think you're going to be impressed. Let's start with the screen layout. So there we go. It's right stick to go to the next menu. Uh, we we'll pick the active elements. And you can see here I can turn on and off all of the elements that are there. Now this is something that I know that KVOSD does it because I just did this same thing on the, I think it's the Eosheen Falcon 210 has KVOSD. You can do something similar to this where you turn all the individual elements on and off. And currently uh, I'm not using a current sensor so basically all I've got turned on here are my fly time and my main volts and my pilot name or craft name. So that's, that's really all I want. But here's all the stuff that you can put on there okay and then the, the back of course is i'll choose back you can also position the elements right so if i go to position main battery i can just move it around anywhere i want to put it right there on the screen now of course i can drag and drop it in the beta flight osd as well but i can do this in the field and it's just as easy as pi okay so i can turn the elements on and off and position them very nice but that's not the coolest thing. Let me just jump to the coolest thing. Oh, okay. Here's the alarms where you can set the RSSI and the altitude alarms. Yada, yada, yada. The coolest thing is this. Configure IMU. What's that? Well, I can adjust my PIDs, but not just the normal PIDs. All of the PIDs, all of the, the beta flight PIDs are here. So here's, here's my normal PIDs, right? But also, under rate and expo, I've got RC yaw, which is not something that you're going to see in MWOSD, at least not the last time I used it. It may have updated, I suppose. I'm sure you'll let me know in the comments if that's true. Throttle PID attenuation breakpoint. You can even do the set points. <gasps> Look, you can change all the beta flight specific stuff, right? All from your OSD. RC preview lets you monitor the channels. So as I move the channels, you can see all of them moving. And that's, uh, you know, troubleshooting in the field, I suppose. Who knows? And then we've got MISC. What's MISC? Oh, look at that. Gyro low pass, D-term low pass filter, yaw low pass filter, all of this stuff. Dude, min throttle, VBATS, everything. All this stuff that we would have to pull out our smartphone or maybe our tablet or laptop, it's all right here in, in the OSD. Isn't that great? There you go. And that's it. Actually, that's not it. I was so excited to show you guys the Betaflight specific IMU features that I forgot to show you the ability to change the video transmitter settings and the black box settings as well from the OSD. So real quick, here's that stuff. This is accessed from the features option. You can set black box options, including enabling, disabling black box, 
and changing the rate denominator. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like you can erase the black box if you have data flash from the OSD. That would be kind of useful. Maybe that'll be added in the future. And then here we'll go to the video transmitter settings. And you can see we can enable and disable the video transmitter. One thing I'm not sure about is if you disable the video transmitter, how do you get it back on again without being able to see in your goggles? I don't know. Maybe it resets when you power cycle. I don't, I don't know about that. But <laughs> it's a good question. You can change the band, the frequency band, the channel. You can set low or high power. And there you go. And of course, I have to reiterate here that what you see in these menus and what you can do depends on the capabilities of your video transmitter. For example, the low power, high power option wouldn't apply if your video transmitter didn't have adjustable output power. And of course, if you don't have a video transmitter integrated into your board like the Siren does, then these options won't be there at all. But that may change in the future. I know that some people are working on a standard serial protocol for communication between the flight controller and the video transmitter to allow you to control the settings of your video transmitter from within your OSD regardless of whether you've got an integrated one or an external one. I believe that's something that TBS has been working on developing or maybe TBS standard the pro standardized the protocol on that. And I know that I've heard the race flight guys talking about that. So hopefully that'll come at some point in the future. So there's your quick look at the Betaflight OSD. Uh, I wanted you to see that it's not just MWOSD with an easier configurator. It's, 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 it's the Betaflight OSD with all the Betaflight options and stuff in there. And I'm sure it's going to continue to get better at the same pace that Betaflight has continued to get better over the last months and now coming up on years. We were looking at the Siren FPV. That's the board we're using right now. But Siren FPV is not the only one to have the Betaflight OSD, most notably the Omnibus a series of boards have it and many more are coming uh, in the market it's becoming more and more common to see this incorporated so the future is bright for osds i guess is what we could say that's all for now thanks for watching happy flying